يستفتونك قل الله يفتيكم في الكلالة إن امرؤ هلك ليس له ولد وله أخت فلها نصف ما ترك وهو يرثها إن لم يكن لها ولد فإن كانت اثنتين فلهما الثلثان مما ترك إن كانوا إخوة رجالا ونساء فللذكر مثل حظ الأنثيين يبين الله لكم أن تضلوا والله بكل شيء عليم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومتابعه بإحسان يا مدين كيف تعيش والله وعكس بلادنا لبروفات صلى الله عليه وسلم وصحبه وكمبان وصحبه مسلم وإن شاء الله ويعطيك أن تدي أسباب الإرث أسباب الإرث So that is what we are taking today Now you can see on the screen this is the topic and the translation is causes of inheritance. So meaning that in Islam, because as we told us, Islam is a systematic religion. So everything is stated clearly. So what can cause somebody to inherit? Can't just inherit somebody just come from nowhere, like we see in other system. No, Islam define what can make one to inherit, what are the causes that can make inheritance to occur. So we can see it on the screen. We have Alwala, you can see. We have Al Nekah, we have Al Nasad. So let me take this first. Al Nekah, what do we mean by that? Marriage. Marriage, do we get? So when there is a marriage, what do we mean by the marriage? What Islam defines as marriage? A marriage, a marriage that have Akdom Sahih. That did not start in an Islamic way. A man and a woman, because marriage, we have witnesses, we have them, um, Wali, and the time is not, we have them, um, or um, that there is an acceptance from both parties. What Islam called marriage. So when this, when we have this, um, is one of the causes. So meaning that husband can inherit when the wife dies. And the wife can also inherit when the husband is dead. And we should note, even if, even if after the nekah or uh, the not is died, one of them died a few minutes after. For instance, we attended the nekah after the, the not is died. After just five minutes after what we don't pray for search, one of the couples now can die. So how about they can inherit from one another? The wife now can die. The husband can inherit. The wife, the the husband, no, and the, the wife will inherit. Do we understand? The wife will take one fourth of the property. The, we will not wait till oh, but they have not entered into one another, or they have not been in the say consummation. Maybe a war will cause a change cause between them. No, because at that moment the tie not is tied. The wife has become haram for other people to have access to other non mahram so they can inherit. Also, in another way, is if your wife is in entered that she can still return as the wife of of his husband, the we get now. So, but the wife is not in there doing talak, but the under is what we call um, is the talak is the talak or jai. So, if, because another person can marry her at that time. So if the husband dies at that moment, the wife can also inherit. But if it is, is it Tolak that is Tolak the one that it at the, that's the third time the husband is Tolakin her. So I use the word Tolakin. <laughs> so that time that if it occur, the, hus- the wife can't inherit the, uh, the husband if, it, if the husband died at that moment. So in some way, what I'm saying is, in the car is one of the components of 
um, one of the causes that can make either of the spouse or the spouses to want to inherit one another. So that should be taken note, take note of. So let us look at um, Anasab. What do we mean by Anasab? Kinship, blood relationship. So Islam, because one of the goals of Islam is to what? Is to, he, he, as Allah use um, kinship, um, or sorry, inheritance to what? Is one of the, one of the tools Allah used to strengthen the ties of kinship. To strengthen this, like uh, one of those things now come to protect is your genealogy, your lineage. One of those allow you to strengthen it is concentrating inheritance towards to kinship. Concentrate, you can see that all these things mentioned allow concentrate inheritance within the family circle. So, because of that, so we should not be, kinship will, will be one of the causes of inheritance, and that majority of the causes or majority of the people that are inheriting, you see that they are what? They are blood relations relations of the dead, of the deceased to be gay. So very very key. So Nasab, so the person should be a family member. So maybe the son, father, mother, grandmother, and others too that can inherit. So they will have, they, they will be that tie in between them to be gay now. So that is that's concerning kinship. Also we have. This is not really common nowadays again, what we call emancipation. In some textbook, they use al book al book It also means emancipation. What what are we trying to say there? So this wala is my purpose, meaning that let me explain this to us. When during this time that there is still slavery, so when somebody is in slavery, somebody now emancipates that slave away from slavery. Do you get now? So if that occur, occurs, the emancipator, the person who take another person away from slavery, can inherit that person he, he has what he has emancipated from slavery. If the person what the person dies, do you understand now? Who are we saying? The person who, who was a slave before, if he dies, the person who emancipates him can inherit him after his death if we could not find others who can inherit him do we understand all the people in this nasab category all the people in the nasab category all the people in the nasab this category we can't find any of them in most this person will be able to what to inherit do we understand now so this is what we call animals that will have all these main agreements here they could we could not find them so inheritance can come to what to this um and what they can come here so let's look at something a there is a this person is an emancipator the biggest emancipator we have b b was a former slave the biggest now this is a former slave it is this is a this a that in a in, in what liberate b from slavery can you see B was a former slave. It was this person that emancipates this B from slavery. So this person dies. Do you understand? So this person can inherit this B in, in some situation which, as you are learning this course, you learn more about how this emancipator can inherit. Although it's not really common nowadays, but part of the knowledge you are learning. Now, but this is not vice versa. It is not what vice versa. Let's say, let's say. In another situation, let's look at this. This is a former slave. This, this, you get. So, let's look at it in a second way. It was emancipator that died first. You get now. This is emancipator. He dies. This person cannot inherit him. This, this. This person, he can inherit what he can inherit a is not vice versa. But if the former slave dies, the emancipator can inherit the former slave. So let's take note of this. There's no common law equivalent. So and that is what we call Allah because when there is such when there's an emancipation, we will be as a call you get so called person in all now. So that is um, one of those we want us to look at so quickly. 
and this is another sub good we just want to share more so in some reverb as bubble every causes of inheritance and make her that is husband can inherit from the wife the wife can inherit from the husband if any of them dies also we have another sub blood relationship like we have we know son daughter this is even common in many inheritance system we also have aliwala and that is what um inheritance by emancipation the emancipator only not vice versa and inherit from the um, from the words can inherit after the death of the words of the farmers they really understand now so that is that so that is what we are taking on the anosa kinship class that is from us Senator of Ivada. So quickly in summary, when we say causes of inheritance, what do we mean? We mean towards these three and Nika and Nosab and Alwala. The last that we promise as an act of Ivada and is of the work. So we want to go about that too. وَلَكُمْ نِصْفُ مَا تَرَكَ أَزْوَاجُكُمْ إِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُنَّ وَلَدٍ فَإِنْ كَانَ لَهُنَّ وَلَدٌ فَلَكُمُ الرُّبُعُ مِمَّا تَرَكْنِ مِنْ بَعْدِ وَصِيَّةٍ يُوصِينَ بِهَا أَوْ دَيْنٍ وَلَهُنَّ الرُّبُعُ مِمَّا تَرَكْتُمْ إِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لَكُمْ وَلَدٍ فَإِنْ كَانَ لَكُمْ وَلَدٌ فَلَهُنَّ الثُّمُنُ مِمَّا تَرَكْتُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ وَصِيَّةٍ تُوصُونَ بِهَا أَوْ دَيْنٍ وَإِنْ كَانَ رَجُلٌ يُورَثُ كَلَالَةً أَوْ امْرَأَةٌ وَلَهُ أَخٌ أَوْ أُخْتٌ فَلِكُلِّ وَاحِدٍ مِّنْهُمَا السُّدُسِ فَإِنْ كَانُوا أَكْثَرَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ فَهُمْ شُرَكَاءُ فِي الثُّلُثِ من بعد وصية يوصى بها أو دين غير مضار وصية من الله والله عليم حليم